What's up, everybody? Welcome back. It's Extra Points. John Barry to my left here. I'm Eric Schmolt. If you followed us last week, you know our show's gotten a little shorter, condensing it a little bit. We're keeping it local. And you'd also know we're talking girls' hoops this week as we kind of go back and forth week to week. And uh, there, as we talk about the area girls' teams, and we're only, you know, a little bit more than a month away from the Tournament. state championships. Yeah, March which is, Madness. Which is crazy. Uh, seeding meetings coming up this week. And I think. Uh, among our area teams, all eyes kind of on Whitewater, the number one ranked team in Division Three, and looking to try to get the state and win it for the second time in three years. Yeah, and well, they should be because uh, the Whippets playing pretty good basketball right now, and not uh, really being tested, and uh, certainly not their fault. They're just that much better than everybody else in that conference. And I think the thing with them recently is is teams have kind of hung with them a little bit in the first half, but the second half they've just been lights out and uh, pretty good. McFarland team hung with them. For a half, and then Whitewater just turned it up a notch that second half and, and put them away. And, and certainly, same thing with Oregon yep, on Monday night. Monday night uh, yep. A team that uh, doesn't have a great record, but they're one of those teams like Mil Milton playing that Badger South, where you're kind of running the gauntlet every yeah. night there in that conference. So, um, you know, those were kind of two of the tests that Whitewater was going to get here among some games, some some probably more lopsided games here right. as we near tournament time. But probably a good time for them to get at least tested a little bit. And they did, and, and they responded, and, and I think that's what you expect out of a, a senior-laden, experienced team like that that's got a state title under their belt two years ago with a lot of the same players that were on that team. So, you know, again, we've talked all year. I think when you look at it, not that there aren't other teams capable, but I think the whip is certainly our best bet in this area uh, to make a run to the rush center. And it'll be tough. They run into teams like the Marshall that beat them uh, to open the season. The only team yep. that's beaten them, they'll get Edgewood, which, um, you know, Pretty, That'll be a classic. Last year. That, I mean, those two play, that's going to be a classic. Um, and, and we'll get to see. <laughs> that's going to be a fun regional and sectional to watch there. And uh, for the Whippets, obviously, led by Miriama smith Traore, who's going to Marquette. She's a walking double-double, triple-double. Yep. Sometimes, I think, was uh, just about had a quadruple-double quadruple quadruple double, one yeah. night. So she does it all for them. Uh, and to me, the tournament run will probably come down to the supporting cast and just kind of how yep. much they can help her because she can't she can't do it all. And teams will find ways to make sure that somebody else has to beat them. And I think that one person that you talked about, that supporting cast, Rebecca Schumacher, who started two years ago when they won state, who's headed to Quincy next year to join her sister down there, uh, Sarah. And, you know, she's also capable of, of putting up big numbers. And, uh, you know, let's face it, right now they don't have to do a lot because they're, they're not in a lot of close games. And it seems like every time we get a – email from Judy Harms that kind of says the same thing, you know, uh, we played, we played okay, we need to work on some things, but oh, we won by 30. <laughs> so, you know, nice I mean, nice spot to be. Yeah, in. it's it's a good position to be in. And like you say, I, I think they do need to be tested before the, the tournament starts because they're going to, they're going to hit it hard right away with some good teams because that's a pretty loaded sectional. But I, I think when you look at it as a whole, again, I think Whitewater's our best bet to, to make a long postseason run. And when you look at the city teams, well, you know, hold on. Let's okay. before we All get right. before we get any further. You okay, know, let's pause for a second here. All right, All right. slow down. A okay, slow it down. Was that Scale it back. The other I was night? trying to make a segue there. Well, we don't need to segue quite yet. Miriam's <laughs> going to do it for us because okay. I talked to her on Friday oh, okay. night after that McFarland wow. game, and uh, she she kind of told us so uh, you know what where this team stands right now and what they need to work on here okay. looking for the postseason. I mean, I think there's no limit. If we play our very best game, then um, I mean. Other teams are going to have to play their very best game to beat us um, because we definitely have the talent that it takes and we have the motivation that it takes um, to to go all the way. And I mean, that's that's the goal. Um, with this game, I mean, one of the tougher ones in the Rock Valley, and yeah. get Oregon on Monday. I mean, uh, nice to get some tests here, I guess, here yeah. before the end of the season when mm -hmm. you get into a, a pretty tough sectional. Yeah, it's nice to have some competition and. Um, those are just the most fun games. You can tell from the atmosphere that the fans love it, and we love it, and it's so fun. <laughs> uh, obviously, on the other side of the Rock Valley, a little bit more of a race. Clinton and Bigfoot going kind of neck and neck there. Bigfoot got the upper hand with yep. the uh, with the win on Monday night, and they'll play again this coming Tuesday, and then we'll know a little bit more about the Rock Valley South. As you were trying to get to before we needed a pause there, right? Uh, obviously, the big talk of the town this week: Craig and Parker playing each other at Craig Thursday night. Two teams that are kind of reeling. They've, they're going through this gauntlet of the Big Eight. They've basically played the top four teams in the league over and you know in a row here. So uh, both of them looking to get a win. And uh, Parker 
won the first meeting at Parker, and now Craig gets the home game in the uh, rematch. You know, and, you, and like I said, you, you look at those two teams, I think when you look at Parker, they've got the go-to score. They've got Julia Hartwig. They're just having trouble getting her the ball. Turnovers are just killing them. They had 17 in the second half against a very good Sun Prairie team, and the Vikes had a seven-point lead at the break. Uh, I thought they were playing pretty well, and then the second half, just all kinds of trouble hanging on to the ball. And I think when you go to the other side of town, Craig is really missing that go-to score that they've had the last couple of years with Al Hughes and, and Schoenenberger and, and Annie Schumacher, and they don't have that. I'm not saying they don't have somebody capable of doing that, but right now I think that's the one thing that's hurting Craig is they just don't have that go-to player that can get them you know, points down the stretch. And I think when you look at the matchup, two pretty even teams. Uh, the Vikings probably played their best game of the year the first time against Parker or against Craig and beating him. I would think for sure in terms of yeah. shooting the ball. Yeah. And, and just... I mean, that game was just all Parker. Craig just never got into the flow. And even Kerry said, he goes, I I don't know what's wrong. He goes, you know, you would think he'd get up for a Parker-Craig game, but for some reason we just didn't come ready to play. And the Vikes made him pay. And so I would look in the Cougar gym that the – the Cougars will be, they'll respond. They'll they, be ready to go. They've seemed to play better when they're at home. Yep. I don't know if it's getting on a bus or just getting to go to your your own locker room. or I don't know, but they've seemed to play better at home. So I'd expect a good one between two teams that really want to win, kind of going into seeding and going yep. in toward the uh, end of the season here. So should be a fun one Thursday night, 730 at Craig. And, uh, you know, that's kind of about where we're at with yep. the girls basketball scene here in the area. Uh, we'll know. Next time we sit down to talk girls in two weeks, we'll have the brackets in front of us and kind of be able to tell you uh, where everybody's going and what's up uh, as March and what to Feb expect. February madness for February high madness kind of for the girls here. specifically, yes. So we'll uh, see you back here next week on the boys' side of things.